Hi again, I hope you're all uh, okay. It's May 2021 and time for episode 7 of our Dahlia Diary. Last year in April and May the weather was warm and sunny and the Dahlias were all planted out by the 23rd of May. This year is very different. April this year was the coldest for over 60 years and as a result everything in the garden is growing very slowly. We're still getting nighttime frosts and now we've got a wet and windy spell. Just been talking to his dahlias in the greenhouse to try and persuade them to get growing but as you'll see not all of them are responding. Here are some of the jobs he's been doing. Since the last video most of the plants are seem to be coming along quite nicely. Though some of them have got a long way to go. You might be surprised to hear that our old friend Cynthia Houston, which was a very slow starter, is catching up nicely now. But my favourite white cactus called High Debut, which is always the slowest to start, is still underneath this pile of compost. I definitely think it's worth the wait though, it's a beautiful flower. even if the first one doesn't appear until September. Now some of them are reaching the height where I need to take out the growing point. I usually do this when a plant's got three or four pairs of leaves. Actually I'm a little bit behind with this one, it's already got five, so it needs to be done quite quickly. You see the plant's instinct is to produce a flower and if he didn't take out the growing point it will continue to grow upwards and produce one very large flower at the very top of the plant. When that blooms finished it might be several weeks before I got any more. So rather than allow that to happen I need to encourage the plant to bush out send, to send out lateral branches which will all produce flowers. What you need to do is to open the top two pairs of leaves to reveal the growing point and then nip it out. Now you can do this either by just clicking it like rolling it with your, your thumb or you might need to get, it, get your thumb nail to cut it off. Either way it doesn't make any difference. Now once you've taken out that growing point, the plant starts throwing out side shoots or laterals as they're known. Here's one that I prepared earlier. I think you can see there that there are side shoots appearing between the, the leaves and the main stem. Each of those separate side shoots will develop into full grown branches with flowers. Now once you've taken out the growth point of the main shoot, then you've got a choice. You can either let the branches grow on their own and just leave them to it, which is what I do. But if you're a, an exhibitor who wants a, a limited number of flowers but all perfectly sized, then you can take out the growth points of the side shoots as well. Now I'm not one of those exhibitors, I don't know a great deal about it. If you're into that sort of thing, I can recommend lots of videos by a, a guy called Dave Gillum. He's one of the top UK exhibition growers and he's produced lots of videos showing you exactly what you need to do. At the moment there's only the odd here and there plant that needs the, the top taken out. Most of these guys have still got quite a way to go. It'll come to the stage where I'm going round going click 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 taking them all out at the same time. Now you might recall that in episode 6 I showed you how I take cuttings to grow on this pot tubers. These are some of them, I've actually taken 180. I hope that you can see that the ones in the trays at the front are growing on quite nicely, they're probably rooted already. These baby plants will be staying in these trays until at such time as I can get all these other dailies out into the garden. Then I will put them up into pots and eventually the pots will be planted out into the garden very close to each other and then they'll stay in those pots growing on and, un and they'll stay there until the autumn when I bring them inside to store them for the winter. 
Here are some of the Nemesias and Million Bells that we're going to be planting in pots. I've now got them in the garage. The mother plants are on the left hand tray, the baby plants, the cuttings, are on the right hand side. Here are some more. Mother plants on the right hand side and then the cuttings on the left hand side. In the ideal world I will be putting some of these out to harden off on the patio outside. But they're forecasting that it's going to go down to one degree tonight so that's much too cold to risk that. Now it's early May. It's probably three to four weeks before I'm going to start planting out the dahlias. And that's about the sort of time when I like to put on, uh, spread on my blood fish and bone. This smelly powdery substance and uh, my own compost is all that I use on my garden. I don't use any artificial fertilizers at all. It's quite simple to apply. You're supposed to put t two ounces per square yard, which I uh, equate to a bit of a handful wherever I fancy. Just to uh, spread it around and then once you've covered the whole ground and the, the areas that you're actually going to plant your dahlias, it's just a question of raking it into the top three or four inches of the soil. That's all you need to do because the rain will then do the rest, it'll take it down to lower levels which is what you want so that it gets to the roots of the dahlias. Doesn't smell much does it love? No, not much. Now people often ask me what diseases do uh, dahlias suffer from and how do you deal with them? Well over the years I've suffered from aphids. Quite often in uh, warm summers you get powdery mildew and in very hot summers you can get an invasion of red spider mite which are a bit, bit, bit of a problem. In the past I've tried using systemic fungicides and systemic insecticides to eradicate these problems but they've, uh, with mixed success and to be honest I'm not being too keen on breathing the stuff in. And I've been particularly concerned about the effects that these uh, insecticides and fungicides will have on bees, pollinators etc. So I was very pleased when a friend of mine introduced me to this new substance called SB Plant Invigorator. SB Plant Invigorator is supposed to be an environmentally friendly pesticide as well as a growth stimulant that's biodegradable. It uh, is said to control plant plant pests including white fly aphids, spider mites and it can control mildew and uh, as it says there it's got a physical mode of action that means that you spray it on and then it kills the insects and the fungus, the fungus by contact. So when I use it I spray it on during the late evening when the wasps and the bees have gone to bed. Now whether it works or not I'm not totally sure but all I can say is I've used it for the last couple of years and for the last couple of years I've had no attacks of spider mite and I've had no powdery mildew either. So I'll definitely be using it again this year. Now I've got a bit of a confession to make. Though I try to be an organic gardener by using natural fertilizers, fungicides and insecticides there's one pest that I don't know how to deal with organically. I'm talking about slugs and snails. There's no way I could put sharp grit, crushed eggshells, beer traps or cop copper tape around 400 dailies. So I use slug pellets. I put slug pellets down every few weeks from February onwards. Kill them early and kill them often is my motto. Rather than scattering the, the pellets close to each plant, I broadcast them thinly. I only use one bottle of pellets a year and I'm down to my last bottle of the metaldehyde sort which they no longer sell. From then onwards I'm going to have to use the new ferric sulphate pellets. Are they any good I wonder? It doesn't fill me with confidence when it says on the bottle that they help reduce slug damage after three to four days. I'd like to end this episode by talking to you about my daily bible called The Gardener's Guide to Growing Dailies by Gareth Rowlands. I've had it for about 20 years now and I've been referring to it before I've been making these videos just to make sure I'm, talk I'm not being talking rubbish. There's an interesting chapter about the history of dahlias and some beautifully illustrated chapters about the different types and sizes and, and colours of dahlias. Chapter on all you need to know about growing them in the garden.
and how to grow them for exhibition. How to cultivate them, including all the pests and diseases you have to deal with. How to propagate them, either by dividing the tubers or from taking cuttings. There's a section on how to create your own new varieties and information about some of the best varieties in cultivation at the moment. If you're into growing dailies yourself or you know somebody who is, I can really recommend this book. I'm only really telling you about this because I was on the internet the other day and, and found out that it is actually still in publication. Now it's, it's only available, seems to be available on the internet from a company that's named itself after a river in Brazil. But I think it's, still, it's well worth buying. Hope you found this episode useful. We'll be back when we're ready to plant out the dahlias in two or three weeks, I would imagine. And fingers crossed for some warmer weather. Two or three weeks? I doubt that very much.